13 12 69 is our telephone number. Now, this is a bit outrageous, and I don't know how you feel, and I look to you to give me a call to get your opinion. The New South Wales government-owned essential energy has been forced to admit it has overcharged families and business customers across the state of New South Wales that have promised to return the $98 million it has pocketed. Not straight away, as any other business would. And what we'd have to do if we were undercharged, they'd want it straight away, wouldn't they? Guess what? We get it through lower prices in future years. Now, we have the Labor Shadow Minister for Energy, Adam Searle, MLC, on the line. He's uncovered the truth here, so we'll get his thoughts about the whole thing. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Grant. How are you? Very good. Congratulations on the work you've done here because uh, it needed to be done. Essential Energy, uh, pretty powerful business. Uh, it's a government-run, owned Essential Energy, uh, responsible for building, operating and maintaining Australia's largest electricity network. They deliver to more than 800,000 homes and businesses across 95% of New South Wales, so they're something special for us and, and very much needed. But to overcharge us by $98 million and then say, oh, look, we're committed to returning the money by way of revenue adjustments in the years 2019-24. An error was made, that should be returned immediately, shouldn't it? Well, it should, and the, the fact is that high electricity prices have been hurting regional customers for some time now. And the what, did, what did Mike Baird do before he went back to the bank, uh, working for the bank? He said, uh, oh, yeah, sell the poles and wires and we'll be paying cheaper electricity prices pretty well, pretty well straight away. Well, that's what the Liberals promised at the last election, and it just hasn't been the case because prices have continued to spiral out of control. Mm -hmm. And you might remember the energy regulator wanted the networks to cut their network costs mm. quite considerably, uh, but the Liberal government here in New South Wales, the Liberal National Government, went to court to stop that, to overturn that, saying, no, no, these companies must have more revenue. And Essential was one of those customers, but... It was revealed last year they didn't need the extra revenue. Again, a um, uh, document produced under Freedom of Information revealed the truth and Essential had to back down on charging that extra money. But even according to the original regulator's determination, it now turns out they have still been overcharging their customers to the tune of nearly $100 million. Now, you know, any other business court doing that would have to return the money immediately, but... But, but uh, my point, too, is if uh, we were undercharged and they wrote to us and said, look, we undercharge you, you'll have to pay it in the next bill. So that's you can't have it both ways, can you? No, no, you can't. And But the question has to be asked here, why did it take a parliamentary inquiry into higher electricity prices to uncover this? That's right. Well, if the parliamentary inquiry didn't uh, eventuate, then nothing would be said, would it? Well, no. And where was the government in all this? Where was the Berejiklian government and its energy minister... Uh, they, they, they didn't tumble to the fact that Essential Energy didn't need the higher revenue they went to court to argue for. And it appears they also didn't know that Essential Energy was charging its customers $100 million more than it should have been. Mm, yeah. I, I love the new terminology they've come up with. They've admitted they've over-recovered, <laughs> collected more revenue than it should have, over-recovered. Uh, gouged more likely, and that was the plan from the start, and I think they've gotten caught out. Well, they certainly have been caught out, and as you said, rather than return the money immediately, they're doing it in stages in future years. Well, well some of us could be dead by then, to, uh, from 20, 2019 to 24. Uh, seriously, that's just not good enough. No, it's not nearly good enough, um, but the next question has to be asked. Uh, have the customers of Ausgrid and Endeavour also been uh, over-recovered in terms of the money they've paid. Yeah, who's to know? How, and how are we going to know? Well, this, this is a matter I'll, we'll be pursuing with the Minister in Parliament and through the uh, through the prices inquiry, but it just shows yet again the government asleep at the wheel or just not caring about rural and regional customers or mm. customers generally with higher energy prices. I mean, as you pointed out, at the last state election they said let us privatise poles and wires and prices will come down. Well, they haven't come down. They not only privatised the poles and wires, they privatised the power generators and prices are just out of control and sure. governments no longer have the direct levers to, to intervene in that. But, mm. but we've proposed re-regulation of the retail energy sector if we should be elected 
next March as a, as a start to bringing power prices. Do you know that I've been on radio a long time and it's one of the most combi- uh, com- complained about situations, the high power prices. That's all I get, especially over the last couple of years. Well, the, the, the price rises have been extraordinary. I think uh, electricity prices have increased by something like 60% since the state government came to power. Uh, and they've gone up by up to 20% since Gladys Berejiklian became mm. state premier. So, you know, they've got a lot to answer for. And we have yet another example of their bungling, mishandling, or, or, or just their negligence. Yeah. It's, uh, with essential energy, not not for the first time, but the second mm. time in less than 12 months. Look, it's all very well saying, oh, look, well, people's prices will go up and we pay them, I suppose, and we grumble about it. But there's businesses that employ people, too, that I often talk to. I have a friend who owns a a pretty big business, and his quarterly bill is quite massive because he's got a big place, $32,000 for the quarter, right? You know, only four years ago it was 8000 Well, this is this story is being repeated across the state. Well, then businesses go out, they, they can't say, they, they have to say, well, we can't afford to be in business anymore if it keeps going like this. Eventually there is a limit to what people can pay, and uh, I think we are reaching that limit. Uh, government, it's no good for governments to go, oh, well, you know, it's the market, it's someone else's problem. Mm. Ultimately, the community expects someone to do something, and that someone has to be government. So yeah. we've proposed re-regulating the retail electricity market should we come to power next March, mm. at the beginning of... All right, so in, in uh, terms that a lot of people can understand when you say re-regulate, what does that mean to the person who gets that power bill at the end of the quarter? Well, what that means uh, in the first instance is that um, we want to make sure that there isn't price gouging of the kind that we've been seeing to make sure that while uh, energy companies can make a reasonable return on their investment, they can't just engage in price gouging. So we'll put in place measures to stop uh, that, uh, to monitor and to measure their profit margins and to to rein that back in. But there are other measures as well. So, for example, when you're shopping around with your energy uh, company to service you, uh, the offers they make are incomprehensible. There should be a ready uh, a ready comparator so you can measure uh, the offer made by one company with the offer made by another company. So that is something that else that we will require by law. Mm. Uh, the state government spends over a quarter of a billion dollars every year on assisting vulnerable customers. But there's no obligation on the energy companies receiving this money to make sure those vulnerable customers are on the best market deal. Yeah. Do you think that there might be a bit of a form of collusion between Essential Energy and, say, Osgrid and Endeavour and others? Because well, they... And, 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 and we'll ask the question, too. Do you think that the, would, that the government should demand to look at the books of Osgrid and Endeavour to see if they're doing the same thing? Because it, Well, that's something it, that the Australian Energy hmm. Regulator has the power to do, and that's, that's what it should be doing. But particularly where the state government continues to own uh, the energy company, Essential, mm. there's a special obligation to be, you know, a model corporation to service your customers properly. And, and what we've seen is not nearly good enough. So what we do need from government is smart regulation, one that uh, enables companies to make a reasonable profit but not to engage in price gouging, and one that sees proper competition, real competition, uh, between energy providers so that people have real choices, whereas yeah. at the moment they don't feel that they do. I think so. Good to talk to you. Thank you for that, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Well done, Adam Searle. He's the uh, Labor Shadow Minister for Energy. Look, as far as I'm concerned, if uh, Essential Energy has been getting away with price gouging, I would suggest that uh, Endeavour and Osgrid would be doing the same thing. Sort of a form of collusion, if you like. I don't know. But to, to say that... Oh, look, we understand that we, we've overcharged $98 million. Well, we want it back now. We don't want it back by way of revenue adjustments in uh, the years 2019 to 24. That's pie-in-the-sky stuff, and they're having us on. 14 to 8, the Super Radio Network.